So it okay. sits in the same cradle as a magnet breaker and all that. Okay. And so, but that would be the device you have to swap out. So you think about like the airbag in your car. When it fires and it does its job, it has to be replaced. All right. I've got this in a, a switch gear lineup. Mm -hmm. um, do I enable it before I do work or is this active all the time? It's active all the time. There are there are models out there where you do have to act. Yeah, you know, like arms and things like that. Yeah, you know, what will the arms? What? Yeah. Yeah. I can be commercial yeah. now. Yeah, so yeah you can be. Once you're inside the room, always right? active. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's always push. active, and you know what? This this takes up a lot less space than than that product. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? This yeah. takes up a lot yeah. less real estate. It fits right into the rest of the lineup. It, you know, we can put it downstream a little bit. We, we, we like keeping it around the main breaker. And the perfect spot for it is on the line side of the main breaker. Right. Okay. But you got to have a triple wall device upstream. Like a, yeah, like a you got to have something that you can open. The perfect spot for it is on the line side of the main breaker. Right. Okay. But you got to have a triple wall device upstream. Like a, yeah, like you got to have something that you can open. So it's got to be out of the circuit within 30 seconds. So you've got, you've got um, within here, you're monitoring voltage, right? So you can see fluctuations in voltage. No, yeah. no, 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 you're not. Just light and current. Just light and current. Well, and, and that's, that's it. And that's, that's done with these devices. Th okay. This is just a quenching device. It, it gets a signal from this device. So, so when it sees the inrush and the flash. Yeah. It, right. Yeah. It goes. Assuming it didn't get a blocking okay. signal from a feeder breaker that's clearing a downstream fault. Okay. If the feeder yeah, breaker's clearing yeah. downstream fault, you'll have yeah, yeah, yeah. Because light, it, it's going to open. Yeah. But it, it, it'll send a blocking signal and say, close your eyes, I'm clearing the fault. And, okay. and, that's, and that's what's very important. And I say that because there's been a lot of vendors with arc detection systems and don't talk about that nuisance tripping. Oh, no. Remember when all that started? Right. It started in the medium voltage world with VI, with vacuum technology. Well, guess what? You don't have a flash in vacuum technology. Right. So you don't have to worry about that. Now I just moved down to the low voltage row and you have ACBs, we gotta deal with that flash. So so device here. I've got a, a switch gear lineup, a switchboard lineup. This, this device is actively talking to all the other devices in that point. This device. Yeah, these devices oh, this are device, talking yeah. to the breakers, yeah. So yeah, so, yeah. so they they communicate. Yeah. So if one of them says, hey, I'm opening a fault, it gives this guy a stop set. Right. Okay, but there's, I mean, you're not going to go downstream of this equipment because it's only looking for the flash. In Correct. This, equipment. this protects the switch gear only. Okay. All right. Where the sensors are sold. Well, yeah. Well, that, with that's pretty cool. Fit, but, but, but not, yeah, I mean, there's, no, there's, obviously there's endless configurations, right? One of the, one of the neat things about this and our, with our MCC brethren is you could actually put one of these downstream of a feeder. Right. It's feeding that MCC or multiple MCCs, right? And so the sensing equipment could be in the MCCs communicating back to this device, right? right. And we can have all this in the switch gear and clear that circuit. Now your whole MCC is protected by this device with an upstream piece of switch. And, and when? There's, obviously, there's endless configurations, right? One of the, one of the neat things about this and our, with our MCC brethren is you could actually put one of these downstream of a feeder. Right. It's feeding that MCC or multiple MCCs, right? And so the sensing equipment could be in the MCCs communicating back to this device, right? right. And we can have all this in the switch gear and clear that circuit. Now your whole MCC is protected by this device with an upstream piece of switch. And, and when? Clear that circuit. Now your whole MCC is protected by this device with an upstream piece of switch. And, and when? This begins to operate. It tells this device to open. Yeah, again, this device tells this to operate and this to open. Okay. This re that's the brains right here. That, that's what's giving the signals to both of these devices to do their thing. Do you, do you have an example here of what that looks like? The, what's inside here? The arc quencher device? Inside the quencher? Oh, we didn't bring our model, did we? It's, it's in our other demo. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's in the Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do yeah. have a cutaway version of this guy, but not here. <laughs> yeah, I'm on, I'm on Kobe and kind of tan as well. And it is a draw device, which makes it nice, and, so that when it does go, I can rack it out, rack it, it can, in one in. It can fit in. It can fit in any magnum slot. 
there, there is a slight variation. Anyway, we have to we have to we interfaces with the secondary contact slightly different. Mm -hmm. So we have to modify, it, but it, the cassette's all the same except for that secondary. Okay. We have to move it forward a little bit so it engages a little bit sooner. All right. So.